Turbo's good, but he is also himself covered with algae. It just basically covers up the beauty that is the Diamondback Terrapin. Let me show you the simple way that most people who have large collections of aquatic turtles like to keep them. They're the perfect little fish for us to get to reproduce and for him to eat. So let's put him in. So a few months ago, we set up a turtle tank out here at the camp for a little turbo. Diamondback Terrapin. As you can see, it's not going so well. Our animal mission is simple. Education in action, conservation in action. This is Camp Kennedy. <laughs> All right, you know what guys? I'm gonna knock this off. This was a last resort. As you can see, the tank is filled with algae. Um, gotta be honest, 100% purely honest. Uh, I set this thing up outdoors. Uh, it gets sunlight, more sun means more algae. The water's fine, but well, that's not true. Uh, this filter isn't powerful enough. Um, basically, for me, it's a enormous pain in the butt. So I'm actually gonna pull Turbo out of here and we're gonna show you what I do since I have so many animals. You wanna make things nice and easy and simple. Turbo's good, he's right here. He's getting bigger, but he is uh, also himself covered with algae. <laughs> A little buddy. Let's see, we got this little algae pad. We can just gently scrape some of the algae away and that doesn't hurt him. Uh, the algae, it just basically covers up the beauty that is the Diamondback Terrapin hatchling that we have, that Fred gave me. But anyhow, guys, so let me give him a little dunk. Yeah, there we go. So anyhow, uh, Turbo's gonna go to a new home that I've been setting up, and the reason I like them is they're very simple. I'm gonna show you why. Here, we've got a filter, we got the lighting, all this stuff that, to be honest, I, I did it just to show folks how to do uh, a turtle tank up north if they wanted to do it. Much easier to do inside, much easier to control the environment. Uh, out here, I've got dust blowing in, we got insects falling in, which is kind of good because he's eating them. Uh, but the algae was a real problem. And of course, since I am not a uh, Aquarist, okay, I'm just not. Is that a word? I think it is. Okay. Aquarius? <laughs> aqu aqu yeah, I, I think so. I, I don't know if I'm saying it right. All right. Someone will correct me down below. Yeah. Don't worry. Have no fear. <laughs> uh, but it is a weird a word. <laughs> Did you catch that? Uh, anyhow, so um, basically, you know, since I am not, this is not my passion is keeping the animals in these enclosures. I prefer the ultimate, um, the ultimate aquarium, which is a pond. Uh, I get into that because for me, uh, it's outdoors, it's just easier, it's a larger volume of water. Once you get it stabilized, it's perfect. Um, it's just not for me, and certainly not out here uh, where there's too many elements to control. Uh, you can't fight the sun, right? You I mean, can't, that's you know, key, you, can't, right? you can't fight the sun, it just causes the algae bloom. Uh, I'm sure there's ways to do it, but I'm not getting involved in it. Let me show you the simple way that most people who have large collections of aquatic turtles like to keep them. Uh, if they're not keeping them in ponds, there's something called the Aqualand tub. Now you can use different tubs. I like the Aqualands. I've got plenty of them in storage. I pull them out as needed. I always keep one empty for situations like this. This little guy here it was also little Leo's. Uh, and you know, as with children, they lose interest. And uh, so Leo, you know, stopped worrying. Oh, you're gonna bite me? Oh no. Uh, Leo stopped worrying about turning lights on and off and I had to start doing that. So it's just easier to not use the electricity not mess with stuff and here we have the aqualand tub i made this lid where you can kind of keep predators out but what i can do is i can trickle water through or i can drain it out completely and then refill it as i need it very very simple especially when you're dealing with lots of different animals uh, what i also have are these we've got a bunch of cork bark so i'm going to place some in there okay i just like to put a lot of this floating stuff so there's always a place for the turtle to hide under and to kind of rest on. And then the other thing that I like, and they make them in different sizes, this is of course a large turtle dock from Zoomed. Uh, more than enough. I'm going to keep this one in the shallow side. Can I interrupt for yeah, just please, uh, an obvious question? Yeah, what's up? Uh, you get algae in there too, though, don't you? Yeah, but okay. it's but you drain the water easily and it doesn't bother me because it's really more of a grow out 
then it is a beautiful aesthetic thing to look at. Right. What I want to do is I want to get this little guy big enough to where I could put him out in the front pond. Okay. That's the plan. So I'm not really worried about, you know, I, I want to have these animals have everything they need, but I'm not really worried because it's kind of a grow out situation. So he's going to get natural sun. There's going to be little minnows I'm going to put in there, and uh, he's going to be swimming around. i got to get him little buddies, don't you think? We need to get some more babies to hatch up. But what happens is I use this for my aquatic babies. So when I get grandis or some of the sliders that uh, may hatch out, the eggs I find, I throw them in here, I raise them up, and then I put them back into the actual um, pond. You can just see how different the algae uh, as opposed to when you clean it off. So let's put them in. And you'll see this little guy has got a huge enclosure to explore. And once I get little minnows in there, it's going to be no problem. But here's something that I got to think about. Look at over here. Look at the size of this PVC opening. Um, I actually went and I plumbed these with PVC bulkheads so that I can run a standpipe and have it drain out when I want to. If I want to empty it completely, I just pull this plug and it'll drain completely. But here we have a, a potential way this animal can escape. Uh, it can crawl over and fall through since he's such a small animal. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply block that off to where he can't get there. And the first thing that comes to mind that I just looked at is this rock. I'm going to place this rock right there. Water is still going to flow through it, but there's no way he can push it off and there's just no way that he can actually get out. Uh, another thing you can do is just get a little piece of screen, cut it, lay it over and put a rubber band around it and then you got some screening that he certainly can't get out but for the sake of ease in this video i'm just throwing him in there just like that what do you say we get a little minnows yeah yeah let's do it let's go get some minnows we're going to shut the water off because we got enough water he's swimming around i love watching diamondbacks swim they are cool um but again guys you know we got to keep things easy here at the camp because we've got a lot of animals all right, so we're going to get a little uh, minnows here. We're not going for the cichlids. We're looking for these little gambusia. And they're from the southeastern United States, these fish. They're also called mosquito fish. And these little guys reproduce. They're live bearers. They can handle the temps here. And since they're so small, they're the perfect types. They're the perfect little fish for us to get to reproduce and for him to eat. So I'm going to grab these up. You know what I should have done? Should have got a little bucket to put these guys in because I want more than this. I want him to really be able to chase around some fish. So you just grab them up. These are females. You can see the females right here. All right. And as they as the females get uh, gravid and pregnant, they their bellies expand and they get black spots towards the base of their tails. And those black spots indicate when they're going to lay. So let me see. Well, let's go back and toss these guys in, and then I'll come back and get some more. But that's how I do it. All my ponds on the property have these in them because I like to make sure that there's no chance for mosquitoes to uh, overpopulate in any of the standing ponds. Oh, that thing just went down. That's a great thing for everyone everywhere, I would think. You know, yeah. mosquitoes. You know, yeah, just... mosquitoes down south, as you can imagine, uh, they're very prevalent. So there we go. We just put them right in. These guys are pretty tough, also, as you can imagine. I'm not really. The water is the same. I'm not really worried about acclimating them. Um, it is what it is. These guys are going to wind up being feeder fish. So we get them in there. We're going to get a few more. Um, obviously, you know, I have this lid. When I shut it right like that, no predators can get in. We got plenty of sunshine. Super easy. You guys have seen me use this before, but I really like these as tubs because Pete Jansen, who started Waterland Tubs, uh, he's a turtle expert, um, has a lot of different species at his home in California. I've been there before. And basically he saw a need. Snake guys had their vision cages and rack systems. And he designed these to be easy for larger breeders of turtles and even tortoises you can use. These are actually called the semi-aquatic tub because in fact, what they really want to have happen with these tubs or what they're designed for is this side here is a shallow side. It's got water that you can kind of fill up and you can keep semi-aquatics or tortoises in here if you have babies or hatchlings because right, then so they'll like walk half up. Fill it basically. Exactly. Not half fill it. There'd be water on this side yeah. and then land on that side and they walk over oh, this I ramp. I don't know if you can see that with the yeah, glare. Yeah. They can walk over ramp. What I've done is I put the bulkhead on the other side and use the larger side. I'm just using it as a full aquatic. It's very simple. But there are different types of waterland tubs and different sizes. You can check them out. But we've been using them for years now 
and uh, they really do work wonders. They're fantastic, especially if you put them outside. I've also seen breeders who've really done a great job setting up all the tubs and making it look nice and uniform. There are lids on top of it, really, really nice stuff. But anyway, that's how I do it. I just wanted to update you, or to update you on Turbo, because some of you have been asking about him. He's still here, he's loved. Uh, we're just gonna keep him in a bigger enclosure. I'm gonna feed him, it's gonna get bigger. In the next video you see with Turbo, we're gonna be putting him out front to hang out with all the other turtles in a beautiful pond. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and maybe learned something just to see how we do it. And uh, let me know how you guys do it, man. Comment below, love to check that out. I get ideas from you all the time. So thanks so much for watching. Leave a like, thumbs up, you know how to do it. Just be nice to turtles, all right? We'll see you guys later. I'm going that way.